Hi, this is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home, and I want to give a market update or at least an analysis on the market, what the future might look like based upon my hunch and my guess. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just based on a lot of thought processes that I put into place, plus, you know, 20 plus years of experience being in the construction industry and dealing with ups and downs in markets. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for, the very first thing, I got some notes here on this stud right here. First thing you want to watch out for is interest rates. And I know this is something a lot of people kind of watch, but they can't really gauge where the interest rates are going to go. But I can tell you typically what happens when interest rates go up and when they go down. Right now, as of speaking this, the interest rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage is around 7%. If that drops to 6%, you're going to see a lot of action in the markets, meaning a lot of refinancing. People will suddenly jump into build. Now they can get a fixed, um, even if it's a construction of perm loan, they can get that now fixed for a whole 10 basis points less than the 7%. So that's actually a good thing, however, for people looking to build. If it drops to 4.5 or even close to 4% or 4.5%, you're going to see what typically call, they people call a, a crack up boom. And that's where oh, people, all this pent up energy that wanted to build and wanted to get into the market, you'll suddenly see that just jump in the market. Right now, people are holding back from building because interest rates are so high and they're just going to wait for things to go, go down. Well, that doesn't necessarily work in their favor because construction is a six to a 12 month build process. So if you start building now at a 7% and interest rates do go down, it's, there's a lot of opportunities for refinancing. Again, talk to your financial experts regarding that. But what I can tell you what has happened is that when interest rates go really, really low, guess what happened last time? When interest rates were as low as 2.5%, we had this massive boom. Everybody was building. All the cost of materials skyrocketed because there was a huge demand. And why was there a huge demand? Because interest rates were so low. They made money cheap. So if money gets to be cheap again, that's when everything starts to go up in price. Right now, OSB is around 12 bucks a sheet. It was over $30 a sheet during about a year and a half ago with a huge boom. So don't wait for things to get better. Uh, worry about things getting worse meaning supply chains increasing, cost of materials going up, and interest rates going up. That's, everyone waits for that not to happen. They wait for the obvious. But you have to think ahead of the trend. You have to think ahead of what typically does happen. So everyone's waiting for interest rates to, to drop, and then they'll get into a home. Well, guess what's going to happen? Price of materials is going to happen. It's called um, a, su a, a supply and demand. If money is now made more abundant and there's more money in the market, then what happens is, is there's more demand. And when there's more demand on all the materials then everybody wants to buy it, then the prices start spiking. So my advice is to you is don't let interest rates be the barometer of everything. You have to look at the quid pro quo, meaning the consequences, uh, the adverse reactions to a lower interest rate, higher prices. The other thing to look at is oil prices. During the fall, oil typically goes down in price. That affects the price of materials also as well. I really like breaking ground in the, in the late fall or early fall. It's typically a good time that I have found in my experience when to break ground. Oil prices are down. Uh, typically, a lot of other things go down in that realm. It's not always the case, but it's just my, my personal gut feeling. The other thing you need to look at is geopolitics. We're going into 2024 next year and that is an election year. And that's a huge, huge issue because nobody wants to run for office or be in office and running with the economy in the crapper. Nobody wants to do that. So there's gonna be a lot of pressure on the system to lower interest rates next year. I can't guarantee that. It's just my personal experience that they'll try to lower interest rates and they could go as low as four and a half percent. I don't know. It's just my hunch. It's my guess, my, 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 my best feeling. <clears throat> I can't see them hiking interest rates to eight or nine 
during an election year. It's just, it, it means an obvious win for the opposing, opposing candidate trying to get in office. Well, there's a power structure in office and it wants to maintain that power. And if those, that power is aligned with the banks, they will lower, lower interest rates to hopefully maintain that power. This is just, I've studied geopolitics. I have a master's in constitutional law. So I've got my thumb beat on that whole situation. And I really watch that. There's one geopolitical issue you really need to watch out for. It's going to affect things in, in the not so near future. And that has to do with you know, climate change and all of these things. They first called it global warming, then climate change. They're, they're going to change their tune. It's going to be called climate boiling. I can't go into some details on that, but there's a real push to create scarcity, which will then create a supply chain issue, and then you're gonna have serious lead time issues. Right now I ordered a 400 amp panel. I'm eight months out from getting a 400 amp panel. Now if that happens to, to be the same with 200 amp panels, you're gonna be out six, seven, eight months before you can even get anything if you're lucky. So supply chain is going to be affected by a pressure on creating more scarcity in the market, and with more scarcity, you're gonna see lead times go far out into the future on things. And that's the future. This is what we have to look forward to. Look at what's happening in Europe and, and a lot of other places. They're actually trying to restrict travel. And if they restrict travel, they will eventually restrict the, the delivery of materials as well, creating more pressure on the whole sociological structure that we currently have. So it's not gonna get better, it's not gonna get worse, but it's not any better than now, uh, really to really start planning and preparing to build if you're thinking about building. I've seen a lot of people just toy with the idea, well, I'll just, I'll just wait, no, I think it'll get better, I think it'll get better, but that thinking is not based upon any analysis, it's not based upon any understanding. So make your decisions on understanding, do some research, get involved in knowing geopolitics, knowing about the interest rates, following the Federal Reserve, following all these sources that are key metrics and telling you what is happening now and what's gonna happen down the road. The other thing to think about is that we're gonna go into a currency change with the central bank digital currencies and all of that. FedNow was basically in place. If you don't know what FedNow is, do some research on what that means. Eventually, what I see happening is more control and more scarcity. More control in what you can buy and sell, sell and how much you can, you can buy and all that. That's, that's coming, it's on the horizon. And it's not just me saying that, there's a huge swath of financial experts and financial an analysts saying that very thing. I'm not telling you what to do with your money, I'm just telling you what, what the projection is. There's a lot of projection out there in the market there's going to be more scarcity. There's going to be more ups and downs. They will manipulate the interest rate to either tamp down on in inflation or to get the market going. Now keep in mind what they've done with the interest rate over the past year and a half. They have gone from as low as 2.5% to as high as 7%. And that slows down the economy. People get worried. Banks are collapsing because they can't carry the burden of all that debt with high interest rates. A lot of things are happening right now. Now, if we go into a sudden tailspin market-wise, they just turn on the money printing machine, lower the interest rate, and then that gets things going again. But then again, that gets everything going again. It gets inflation, gets higher prices, all that. You wanna keep in mind of the cause and effect relationship of interest rates in the market, and then follow geopolitics. Follow what they're doing out there. There's a lot of power that's out there that wants to manipulate things to their benefit. I can't begin to tell you how important this is. I'm gonna put a link below my video of the 10 or so top uh, financial analysts and, and researchers that I find, that I follow. They're completely independent. They're not on any major media resources. They're boots on the ground people. They're working folks like, the, like myself and you are. And so I get a good cross section of who they are and what they are, plus a lot of other people in a lot of different industries and I, get, I follow them. And I, from all those different resources, I get a feel for where I am and what I need to plan for and best timing for building a home. This is the best advice I can give you now for the next at least six months as we getting ready to finish off this year in 2023. It's halfway near, near the middle of the year. 
and on into 2024. I will pick up again and give another forecast based upon my, my experience as a general contractor, what I've been through. I lived through 2008. I lived out through, the, through the 2000 uh, tech boom crash. Lived through 1979, the crash that occurred then. I've been through a lot of that. I'm kind of dating myself now because of that. But it's just based upon all that. And now all my research, I put as much research into finance and money and geopolitics as I do technology and new construction. I have to, because if I don't, then I'm not planning for my future properly. If I would have known that 2008 was going to come around when it did, then I could have been better situated and better understood and better prepared, and I could have weathered through it a lot better. And so that's how important studying economics is in your life. Geopolitics, economics. Make that part of your profession in being an owner builder, and I swear it's going to be, it'll pay dividends. It will really give you the confidence you need to go ahead and make a huge purchase to start the construction of your own home. This is Keith Kelts. I have my notes on my two by four here with how to build your own home, giving you the best I can from the gut here inside a remodel that I'm actually working on. You guys take care.